Hi, I wanted to show you how home solar power systems and home battery storage solutions aren't magic. And I get asked all the time, Dave, you've got a big solar power system, got over 10 kilowatts on the house, I've got a really big size battery, got a 25 kilowatt hour uh, battery system, why don't I disconnect from the grid? Surely that's enough to handle all of our electricity needs. Well, yeah, maybe kind of, sort of, in summer when you have really good weather, but um, let me show you what happens. We're coming towards winter now. It is, uh, what is it, 21st of May here, so it'll be winter in a uh, week or two's time, uh, just over a week, and uh, let me show you. We've had a reasonably bad spate of weather recently, and this is why you don't disconnect from the grid. So let's take a look. Here's my um, solar home solar assistant uh, thing here, which uh, logs my uh, DI solar inverter. And here's my battery state of charge. Now this is uh, over the last seven days here, okay? And so normally on it, you know, during summer and spring and autumn and stuff, you know, like on good days, the battery charges up really quick, charges up within, you know, a couple of hours or something. And uh, bingo, it stays like that, even though we we're using a ton of energy during the day. We can be charging the EV. We've got uh, everything is electric in our house. Not only do we have a uh, EV, which uses the Zappi uh, solar charger, which uh, charges the EV using excess energy, tons of that uh, during the day, but we've got a heat pump uh, hot water system. We changed over to that. We've got um, an electric heat pump uh, for the uh, pool as well, but we're not actually, you know, we, we don't uh, use that only in uh, special occasions. Um, our We've got an electric induction uh, cooktop. We've got an electric oven. Uh, we've got an electric dryer, especially on these uh, bad days, of course. You need like a dryer to dry your clothes out. Usually we can hang them outside and use the free solar power outside uh, to dry our clothes. But, you know, you get a bad spate of weather. You've got to use, you know, we've got, you know, I've got a wife and two kids. A lot of washing needs to be done and a lot of uh, drying for the kids' school clothes and everything and all my gym clothes and everything else needs to be done. So, um, yeah, a dryer can... Uh, uh, take energy there. We've got, um, of course, a dishwasher. We've got, you know, all sorts of things. Now, before we got our home storage battery, of course, we tried to actually use uh, these things during the day. We, you know, we recharge the EV during the day. We uh, time all the appliances to come on during the day and all sorts of things. And we've got the lifestyle where we can do that, which is really cool, okay? And usually, um, not a problem if our battery is full or even if the battery gets to, you know, 60% or something like that. Um, we can easily handle all of our energy needs overnight. So technically we could be off grid, but look at what's happened the last seven days, okay? And this is why you can't disconnect from the grid without having an enormous um, solar array and an enormous battery. Because if you get a week of bad weather in a row, uh, you've come a gutsa and you're not getting enough energy to charge your battery and you just bleh. So this is the last seven days here and this is the battery state is charged from zero to 100%. Now I don't discharge my battery all the way for reasons of longevity. Um, it stops at uh, 20%. Under certain circumstances it goes down to 15 but uh, you can see that it bottoms out at 20%. And you can see most of the time for the last seven days it's been completely flat. The battery is flat. <laughs> Look at this. It didn't even get up. Like, there's days in it. Trust me, there are days in there. There's sunshine hours in there, and <laughs> it hasn't gotten up. So, um, yeah, like you can see, this is the same x-axis here. Okay, so, uh, so I probably can't get those on the screen at the same time. No, sorry about that. But you can see, like, you know, where you can see that the yellow curve there is the sun. Obviously, we get, you know, had like a really good day here. But you can see this big load peak up here where we had to use... Uh, uh, the EV charger. By the way, this solar assistant only logs uh, the solar array that's coming from uh, through the DI inverter. It doesn't log the end phase uh, inverter. I'll show you that um, in a minute. So, um, so it's not showing total solar production. But anyway, um, it's the one that handles. It's the uh, hybrid inverter that handles the battery. So you know, we just desperately had to charge the EV there, even and the sun happened to be out. But you know, it's it's taking that. You can see the battery's going. Negative here. Here's the battery power. So it's chewing. It's charging the EV 
from the battery, not from the sun, because we didn't have enough excess sun that day because it's winter. The solar insulation um, is lower. Um, that's insolation, um, solar radiation, basically. Technically, they're different. Go look up um, solar insulation versus uh, solar irradiance. But you can see that the battery just didn't really have a chance to charge up here. It got up to, what, a peak of 49%. And then, well, we had to use it in the afternoon. I don't know, because we had to turn the dryer on or whatever, or, you know, uh, had to use the electric cooktop and you know things like that so yeah it just didn't get a chance this day over here it only got to 33% that's not going to last us through the night as I said the battery needs to get to at least maybe 50-60% and then we've got to be reasonably frugal during uh, the night and yeah we could last the entire night but it doesn't even get a chance it's only at the start of the week did it get up to like you know 90% and ordinarily like in summer and you've got great weather it gets you know to 100% maxes out in uh, you know, a matter of like an hour, you know, a couple of hours or something. And you can see that we've got three more days usage over here, but the battery just did nothing. It didn't even... <laughs> It didn't even charge up at all. The weather was that crap. And if you go down and have a look at here at the uh, power, so the, these are the uh, three. Um, so I've got two different uh, strings plus the auxiliary uh, PV power from an, a bonus uh, two panels that I uh, installed here. So the only decent weather we got was like here, but even then, um, like as you saw, like a, the battery didn't even reach up enough to last us um, overnight just due to you know a combination of the bad weather and what we happened to have on during the day and what we happened to uh, use at night um you know we might have had to you know put on a load of uh washing for uh drying for example because we desperately needed it for the next day or whatever so yeah like you don't really have control over that so this is the total pv power but as i said that's not coming from that doesn't include my end phase uh system that's just for the uh battery but even with that my di inverter knows about my other end phase uh system and it will actually um ac ac couple that energy into storing the battery and stuff but even with that we still didn't have enough power there it's just <laughs> it's just not going to happen anyway if you want to have a look at some of the other things uh here's the battery uh voltage uh for example for the pack there there's the battery temperature inverter temperature for those playing along at home grid frequency grid voltage for you voltage grid voltage aficionados ac output voltage load power load non-essential load essential power but i'm not powering my entire house from the inverter it's not an ac battery it's a dc battery we won't go into the details we've done that before but anyway um, so yeah, you can go over here. Let's have a look at my solar analytics for these days, for example. So the solar analytics um, will it looks at my energy uh, consumption, and we weren't even using the aircon. We haven't used the aircon in the last week because we've got a fairly firm, thermally efficient house. hasn't gotten that cold, so we haven't, and we've got a heat recovery and ventilation system. Um, so we, you know, have not had to use the aircon uh, at all. Even it got a little bit chilly, but definitely not uh, chilly enough to put on the uh, aircon during these weeks. But you can see here you know we, we we had to put the um ev ch charger on here for example and uh, and then the pool i haven't it's winter time now so i haven't uh, set the timer back for two hours it still comes off for four hours a day the uh the blue curve there is the hot water heat pump it comes on for a couple of hours a day so it's using just over a kilowatt for a couple of hours and we had to you know boost the ev charger at the full seven kilowatts there for example and then we had to put the ev charger on here uh for example that you know we desperately needed it because we didn't have enough um energy from the days before and stuff you can see like we're very frugal that day you can see that the axis has uh, scaled you can see that we hardly used anything during the day and night uh this big one over here so all of our nighttime stuff was coming from still coming from the battery over here but nah once your batteries run out and then you have a spate of bad days after that um no, you completely come a gutter and i would need like for me to go completely off grid i'd have to pr probably at least double the size of my um solar uh power system and i'd have to four or five times the size of the battery to cater for like a worst case like a week of bad weather and i've got a big 25 kilowatt hour battery so um, i'd have to go for i don't know what a 75 kilowatt hour battery a hundred kilowatt hour battery something like something insanely huge like that to, to cater for the worst case scenario unless of course you were happy to have your power go out 
<laughs> if you have a spate of, you know, four or five days of bad weather in the middle of winter. Um, as I said, yes, summer's great. Summer, we have oodles of excess energy and uh, and the weather's, you know, better in summertime. And I live in Sydney. Sydney is one of, one of the best, like, solar insulation uh, weather cities in the world. But, you know, we get like a week of just cloud, overcast, crappy, rainy weather sometimes. And, yeah, um you can come a gutsa. And a quick look at my Enphase system, which is physically a totally separate system to my DI solar inverter. But as I said, the battery that's connected to the DI inverter knows about its AC coupled to that Enphase inverter. So it can actually ex store the excess energy from, the, it can detect and store the excess energy from that, i.e. it detects that there's energy going back out to the grid, but wasted back out into the grid. Well, wasted in terms of I'm not using it and I paid for the damn system. So um, yeah, it's fitting out back to the grid. So, oh, my battery's not full. I'll suck uh, all that excess back into the uh, battery. Anyway, here's the last uh, seven days here. And you can see, like, you know, like the, the orange curve there is the power produced. And like, you know, it's just, it's just crap. For those who haven't seen it, you can see the two different arrays there. So uh, this strip along here is the end phase. This strip along here is the end phase, as you can see by the overlay. And these two uh, uh, strings over here are the other two that we saw that go over to the uh, DI uh, hybrid inverter. But the battery can utilize all of them because uh, they're AC coupled in. So any excess energy going out of the grid that we and we're not using it locally, um, the in hybrid inverter will go, great, I'm going to take that and charge the battery. But even with this big array like this, <laughs> when you got bad weather in the middle of winter, um, it's not even winter yet. It's still like autumn here. So uh, yeah, like, no, we've just come a gutsa. We just don't have enough energy to charge the battery. So yeah, I've got a pretty big battery in the scheme of, um, you know, home solar systems. People might have one Tesla power wall, what is it, 13 kilowatt hours or something like that. I've got 25. I've, you know, effectively got two of the older style Tesla, um, older capacity Tesla uh, power walls. And it's still not nearly enough to cater for, you know, if you have one bad day, we might be able to survive a bad day in the middle of winter if we didn't use much the day before and if we managed to get up to 100% and we didn't use, ha just happened to not use much at night, then, um, you know, overnight, uh, just ba our baseload residual stuff, if it went from 100, it might get down to say 60% or something like that um, overnight. So it might have enough like 60% for the next day and then even if you got crap weather the next day, you might get up to 70 or something like that and you still might have enough, um, well, you still should have enough enough to survive that next day but anything after that if you get a slew of bad days you, you're screwed so you've got to have this insanely expensive insanely huge battery system not to mention the solar system to match because the you know you're getting lower solar insulation in uh, winter you know, you know in the winter months and then um throw on bad days on top of that and pfft, you know, you just don't have enough excess energy energy to charge a battery. And even if we didn't have the EV at all, we'd still have exactly the same problem. So yeah, home solar and home storage um, is not as great as it's cracked up to be. Because really, if you want to go completely off grid, you've got to cater for the worst case scenario. So if I was on a farm somewhere, yeah, I'd love, you know, and I was going off grid, great. But yeah, I'd probably need a 100, 150 kilowatt hour battery at least, at least. And then um, I'd need you know, three times bigger solar array, but then you've got farm and you've got all the land to stick it on. And so that, that's no problem. Solar panels are pretty cheap. And yeah, but you'd have to go for a pretty big battery system. And then in the summer you'll go, oh, why do I have this big battery? It's just like, it's going from 100% down to 95% overnight. It's like, oh, what a waste. You know, I spent all that money on that battery system, but you know, you're going to need that in winter in bad weather. So there you go. <laughs> Thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.